So here's a picture of me picking up my sailboat back in September of 2020. Drove it all the way down from Albany, New York to Long Island. It's quite an epic trip. Pulled it into the driveway and got to check it out with my kids. Knowing that I was going to be putting my boat in salt water, I had been looking for a boat that had been a freshwater boat. This boat had sailed all over the Great Lakes, parts of some lakes in upstate New York, and I wanted a boat that hadn't been beaten up for 30 years by salt. In this case, this boat was a 40-year-old boat, and it had bottom paint adequate for fresh water, and I knew that I was going to have to strip the bottom down to put the proper salt water, a blade of paint on the bottom. After doing some research and talking to some local boat yards, I learned that I couldn't just take regular blade of paint and paint over the, as it was, VC-17 bottom paint on account of paint compatibility. I was going to have to strip this down to the gel coat and apply a new coat of bottom paint. Although I later learned that I could have painted Hydrocoat Pettit directly over VC-17, but either way, I was able to sand it down and start over fresh. Plus, I wanted to go through the process of putting a barrier coat on the boat and really do it justice. Even though I know that's total overkill, I'm still happy I did it. My first step after getting the boat in the backyard was getting it off the trailer. There are many methods for doing this. I opted for the Jim's Little Boat method. I suggest you check out his video linked in the description. Instead of using cribbing like he did, I created this homemade jack I made out of Harbor Freight trailer jacks and some wood from Home Depot. Basically, once I had the stern as high as I could get it on the trailer, I supported it. And then I used this jack to raise the front of the boat up and slip the trailer through. Of course, this jack has to be wide enough to accommodate the trailer, and that's where the tricky part comes in. So you got to make sure you have a very, very strong beam to support the entire weight of the boat. In my case, I used two 2x8s glued and nailed together, and that was plenty strong to hold up a Catalina 22 for the entire winter. And once I had the trailer out from under the boat, I built additional structure underneath this gantry to hold the boat up securely for the winter. I wish I took more pictures of this stuff, but honestly, you should just go look at the original plans that I copied and make modifications according to your situation. The link for these plans are in the description of this video. Shout out to the guys who put this on the forum. It's really a useful document. Once the trailer was out of the way, I could turn my attention to removing the keel. I built this kind of off-roading cart for my keel, as I knew I needed to cross through some rough terrain in my backyard en route to my garage. And uh, as you can see, I used a bottle jack and the scissor jack from my car to carefully and in very slow stages remove the keel from the boat. As anybody who's watching this video knows, the keel is pretty heavy. Um, it weighs about 500 pounds, so this is not something to be done carelessly or um, if you really feel you don't have the expertise or skill to do this, then I definitely wouldn't do this. This is quite dangerous. You do not want this keel falling on you. Probably a couple days before I attempted to remove the keel from the boat, I sprayed the keel bolts with some PB Blaster to just loosen up the, the threads or any kind of corrosion that might have happened in there. You just never know. And of course, said a prayer before I started to loosen them um, once my cradle and everything was set in place. Before I dropped the keel, I knew that lining it back up to put it back in in the spring would probably be a little challenging. So once I dropped the keel, I built this little gauge to help me line up the keel for raising it into place for the spring. My thought process was that if I could get the keel in the general location it was when I dropped it, that the hangers would line up and it worked out pretty well actually in the end. So once the keel was down, I released the cable and carefully dragged the keel into my garage. I took off the hangers and labeled them starboard and port. Luckily my keel pin was in really good shape and I was just going to leave that alone. I inspected the hull where the keel cable kind of rattled around in there. So this was some hull repair I was going to have to do at some point. Luckily the weldments and the trunk and everything was in really good shape, so I wasn't really going to have to do anything to that. So just good luck on my part. It doesn't always happen that way, so take the wins when you can. With my keel in the garage, I could turn my attention to start taking some paint off the bottom of the boat. To spare my lungs and my back, I decided to use a slow and steady chemical process to, uh, to remove the paint. 
I don't have any pictures or video of me doing this, but what I can tell you is that I copied this guy, Eric Berger, and uh, he's got a great video that shows you how to remove the bottom paint with, with citrus strip. I bought an expensive bucket of aqua strip, which does work, but the much cheaper citrus strip that you can buy at Home Depot also works. A couple things that I would uh, emphasize is being really liberal with how you use it, like gob it on there, use a really thick layer, and then seal it with plastic the way Eric does in his video. Um, it works really, really well. It's relatively clean. Not a bad idea to wear a mask and gloves through the whole process, but I found it to be a good method as opposed to just grinding it out with a palm sander. Yes, it's tedious, but there's no way of getting out of tedious work when doing a bottom job. So just go one little section at a time. It'll take you a few days. I think this whole process took me about a week, week and a half to do. Um, in just hours after work. It wasn't really a big deal. Just kind of get out of your head about it and stick to it. After I had stripped the entire bottom of its bottom paint, I customized a tarp to get the boat stored for the winter. I'll make another short video about that showing my methods for wrapping the boat. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Ring the notification bell for future videos. Hope this helped.